in mathematics, a lot of people are aware of Euclidean geometry, um, which you learn in high school, as well as non-Euclidean geometry, which is um, usually hyperbolic, um, but doesn't necessarily have to be. Now, that involves a curved plane. Um, but one of the things that's interesting about uh, how we denote coordinates on a plane is that we denote that coordinate's position by naming uh, the magnitude on a given vector with dimension um, or uh, di direction. So when you're dealing with a straight line, that's a one-dimensional plane. When you're dealing with a point, that's a zero-dimensional plane. And a plane can, with a coordinate space to it can oftentimes be thought of as a mapping on a field. And fields in physics, um, they're composed of forces that operate in some given space. Um, we tend to think of fields as being large and universal um, to the cosmos as a whole, but they're not necessarily. They can be particulates, um, and they can be localized rather than being um, excessive and infinite in uh, the area that they do. So Euclidean and non-Euclidean um, differ in that Euclidean manifolds or fields or planes, they, uh, those coordinate spaces operate in uh, two-dimensional space, whereas a non-Euclidean geometry tends to operate in a three-dimensional space, even though it is operating on a coordinate plane that is two-dimensional. And that's one of the aspects of denser curvature in um, that plane, that geometric plane. Um, now, all of these concepts are very connected, interconnected and stuff. Um, but Cartesian coordinates usually apply to um, uh, Euclidean geometry is where a lot of people are introduced to them. Uh, but we usually um, denote each vector by X and Y. And the different um, numbers that we use for the different positions or the magnitudes um, but the uh, magnitude, like I said, exists along a vector, and that vector um, gives us dimension to the field and offers a different direction as far as that is working within the coordinate space. So, like, um, one dimension, um, like I said, is a line, um, as far as a plane goes, and it's labeled by X or Y or Z or whatever. Um, actual, um, you can use a different variable if you want the um, vector or the dimension to go in a different um, direction or angle. Um, so starts off zero as a point, line is uh, one dimensional, a Euclidean plane is two dimensional, um, but there are also, like I said, um, two-dimensional um, planes that exist in a three-dimensional space. But there's also one-dimensional planes that exist in uh, two-dimensional two space and zero-dimensional planes that exist in one-dimensional space or as a one-dimensional space. So... Um, uh, one of the things that's interesting about this is then you have the projective plane, which is um, the XYZ plane, and that operates in three dimensions. Um, and a full dimension, um, we tend to represent using uh, perpendicular, uh, if you would call it that, uh, vectors. And uh, that means that you can form a right angle 
or a box between an x, y, and z vector, whereas the vectors in between those dimensions um, don't necessarily form a, a box, but they are still in that kind of in-between space between, for instance, a three-dimensional box and a um, two-dimensional square plane. But uh, And one of the interesting things you can think about when you think about um, a Euclidean plane is that a Euclidean plane, um, unlike a hyperbolic plane, exists completely on um, the, that kind of perpendicular um, vector position. But a hyperbolic geometry exists in between. Um, so going from the projective plane onward, um, we can not necessarily draw in a two-dimensional space or even model in a three-dimensional space. Um, or I don't think we can. We might be able to. But um, the plane defined by those vectors or a geometric plane that is um, larger or has more degrees of freedom than um, a three-dimensional plane. Um, uh, time, the movement in is, uh, time is movement as far as things go as it applies to um, larger than three dimensions or four, at four, but um, you could actually algebraically represent these vectors um, by simply adding a coordinate um, to the coordinate um, Cartesian coordinate that you're using. So let's say that you use x, y, um, z. You would think that that would be a complete projective plane because that's what we can see and what we can imagine. Um, You'd say that the plane has movement, but the, the way that you talk about coordinates or positions and localities in a larger um, geometry than just a um, projective geometry is all you would assume you would really have to do is add um, another variable um, but you can't really differentiate doing that between the variable that's notated um, such that that variable represents um, an extra dimension of space beyond the geometries that we can conceptualize. Um, but you could also um, think of that um, as being a uh, vector that exists in between um, the different dimensions that we do know exist. So like, um, that's one of the reasons why the differentiation in that type of notation would require some type of extra nominal mark um, to give it um, uh, that extra dimension beyond what we can conceptualize or see. Um, and it's interesting that you can't differentiate those using um, normal Cartesian coordinates um, because Cartesian coordinates by the very nature of the notation have an inherent quality such that those coordinates can only exist within a projective plane um, as far as how we notate it and yet um, could subjectively be judged um, to be larger in dimensions than a projective XYZ plane um, or even a XYZ plane that has um, mechanical movement to it or whatever in association with time. And uh, yeah, so that's an interesting thought.